60s. Today, Diana Ross is a recognized superstar, and a big part of her road to success was as a pioneer for black entertainers. Thanks to the genius of Motown Records head Barry Gordy, Diana Ross and the Supremes in the early 60s helped open up white radio and white clubs for black artists. A new unauthorized biography of Ross's life, headed for bookstores, chronicles Ross's role in American music history. When Barry Gordy put the Supremes out there, and they, and, and they were so slick and, and happening, you know, that I think that the public started to realize, hey, wait a minute, it's, it's very possible that we might be interested in black music. And by extension, it's very possible we might, we might be interested in black people. Blacks fought for long overdue civil rights in the 60s. Diana Ross stood among thousands at the funeral of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. in 1968. That same year, Ross felt the ache of racism more profoundly at an incident after a performance in Nashville. Her one-time manager was with her at the time. We were in this limousine, chauffeur-driven limousine, and she said, oh, look, there's a pizza parlor. Let's go get a pizza to take out. And I said, okay, great. Yeah, Berger great. left they Diana to I order the pizza. Uh, Diana herself narrated what happened next on this record album. It was a promotional tool for her movie, Lady Sings the Blues. But with the help of Diana's own words, we can dramatize an incident from her real life. Afterwards, we left. The gang went to a pizza place, and I went to the jukebox just to see what records were on, trying to see if any of the Supreme records were on, actually. And uh, someone said, nigga, nigga. Well, it's a sound that's full of hate, you know, and it's really, it's frightening. But then, nigga, you know, but it was much louder than that. I mean, and the guy did it about three times before I realized what he was saying. And I never saw the man, because there was a lot of men standing around the table. It's a strange thing how they all do it in a group, and you don't know who's what. Or I mean, it's just like the Ku Klux Klan. It's like a group of people, you know. Uh, I turned around, you know, where at first I was frightened, but I don't know if I'm crazy or unusual, but I really got very angry till I wasn't, you know. I didn't like it, you know. In other words, I wasn't going anywhere. You know, I was going to buck these 20 men there. I was going to, you know, as if I was going to fight them or stand up to them. I don't know why. I was not going to leave the restaurant. I was that uptight, you know, with the situation. Today, Diana Ross prefers to simply be identified as an entertainer. But it seemed that in 1968, the murder of Martin Luther King and her own confrontation with racism inflamed her passion for civil rights. For years after that, she echoed the words of Dr. King at her concert performances. Free at last. Free at last. Thank God Almighty, free at last. Thank you. Deep in my heart, I do believe Someday we'll all be free Someday we'll all be free I may not know how long it will be Someday we'll all be free Someday we'll all be free Someday Thank you. 
Thank you very much.